Abby, let's get to the mailbag. Where are we going? Okay. After seven games, what surprises you most about this team and what surprises you the least? What surprises me the most is probably just the overall lack of explosive plays on offense. I, I, I just expected a little more, um, especially in the portal era. Okay, Rob? Uh, just the inability to, to do anything consistently on special teams. I mean, just the fact that dropping back to punt, you're holding your breath on it. Kicking an extra point, Bob you're holding one your breath. Block again at yeah, you know, the fact that like they're inside the 25 and you're like, well, can they make it from here? Like that is stunning to me. And the fact that it's been like that all season long, I mean, I just, I don't get it. I thought they'd be better up front on offense. Uh, we've been having a conversation for a few years where we say no excuses, no excuses, no excuses. They haven't been terrible. Um, I just kind of wait for Nebraska to be really good, you know, where um, there's no doubt that you're watching excellence. That's mm -hmm. I'd like to see him get to that. Mm -hmm. And then what surprised you the least? Um, what surprised me the least? I mean, just the play of Nash and Ty. I mean, even though last week wasn't great, I, I just think they have been what we at least thought they were going to be for most of this season. Record. I'm not surprised by five and two. Now, how they got there because of the 56 seven loss, but five and two is about what I expected. Mm -hmm. I say probably just Dylan rising to the challenge. I mean, he had all the makings of being a guy that was not going to be overwhelmed by this moment as a true freshman. He certainly had his downs, including last week being the worst of it. But I think overall, if you're a Nebraska fan, you still have to really like what you see from that element that their quarterback has a ceiling that's through, that's higher than ever right now. Okay. All right. What do you got next, Abby? What are your thoughts on Micah Mazuka moving to left tackle and switching off with Gunnar Gatula against Indiana? It was fine. I mean, I think it always has made sense to get your best five on the field. I think he is one of their best five as long as he's engaged in doing what needs to be done. Um, but it, it didn't change the world by any means. But I, I do think we'll probably see more of that this week. He deserves praise for doing that because it's not as, he got out of his comfort zone. He's a guard. He's a guard who was willing to move the tackle. He's played tackle at in early of his career at Baylor. Yeah, but he was he's, he's a guard. playing tackle snaps though. Yeah, it's not he, like he's never done it before. He's a guard, as if you're listening to Satterfield today, Satterfield said exactly that. He's a guard who moved to tackle. Um, so I, I give him a lot of credit for moving out of his comfort zone and doing it for the team. Well, yeah, and Sean, you wrote uh, that he played, what, 44 snaps to Catula's 36, and he scored the highest pass blocking grade of anybody. Uh, on job. the offensive line. So good job. I mean, for a guy that is getting his first taste of tackle, uh, or at least in a long time, that's it's a pretty good start. Good job. Yeah, you know, you know, I I think he's a veteran guy too. He's versatile enough that he can do those things. But yeah, I want to get the numbers here just so because when he was at Baylor, he did play at least some tackle, but you're right. I mean, his body is built more yeah, he's a guard. Hard. Okay. Next question. Do you think Matt Rule will make significant changes to his coaching staff after the season? I mean, it's always too early to say, um, but I think in college football now, that's just the norm anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're always going to see right. one to three guys move in and out of staffs. That's just the reality of the money and where college football is. The, the days of having this cozy staff of the same guys for 25 years, Iowa maybe, and that's about it. Yeah, I don't even know if Iowa. You can say that about Iowa. Sean's right. I, it, it, yeah, the I mean the Parker yes. and Woods and some of those guys have been there a long time. At Iowa. Yeah, the answer is yes. There will be movement. What will it look like? I don't know. I don't know why. I'm not necessarily altogether comfortable with this discussion because Nebraska's five and two. It, mm -hmm. it strikes me as a little reactionary to a bad loss. Yeah, I agree. I think it's too early. But if things keep trending this direction. I mean, we were t so when I think of significant, I, I think coordinators. I'm not talking about like a tight ends coach or whatever. You know, I, I'm talking about like big names on your staff and things would have to continue to slide. But right now, like I said, special teams has been a disaster from start to finish. Well, what do you do there? And what rule changed this year? You can have unlimited paid assistance. So, yeah. so it might not entail a firing as maybe a demotion. Ro role reassignment. I mean, yeah. you can take a cop off the streets and put him on a desk pretty easily. And <laughs> Brilliant. Add it to the list. That, <laughs> that. We haven't heard an analogy in a while That's from good. you, and I you needed came that. out swinging. But there's a lot of ways you can do it now with these rules. I mean, you you can more analogies. I mean, you, like I said, I mean, if a guy gets a little rusty on the streets, you put him on a desk. Yep. Sean, why not more analogies? 
I don't know. <laughs> they, you can't force it. Uh, it's got to naturally drop that. Yeah, one. it's got to come organically. He's he does it in conversation though, all the time. I know. All right, what do you got next? How does Nebraska define their identity on both sides of the ball more? <laughs> I'm still getting over Sean's analogy, which was incredible. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, define their identity. They, they ah. need to stop the run and be an elite run defense. That is their identity. If they can do that, kind of everything else around them gets better. Mm-hmm. We know the un- offensive identity. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's where they're best suited to kind of hang their hat is on the lines. All right, because right now we're talking about the issues on the – perimeter and whatnot where's what we the biggest strength that we assume is the defensive line like they got to continue to make that what their defense is all about and that is stopping the run and getting pressure with four and being able to drop back in coverage like if they can do that they're going to have a chance in most games and on the other side of the ball it goes back to the run game if they can just run the ball somewhat efficiently I think that's going to take a world of pressure off Dylan Ryle in that passing game. And all of a sudden the offense looks a whole lot better as a result. Here's Abby. I'm glad you asked the question because what I see from the offense isn't, doesn't always sell the matches what we've heard from the head coach, what he wants the offense to be, which is what kind of ground and pound work off it with play action. It's not, it's not always going to be that simple, but that's, that's what he'd want. Kind of the old, the Baltimore Ravens, old Baltimore Ravens. Um, that's what they did. It was pretty. It was pretty simple, actually. But it, you never see it hardly. So that I, I think we know what they want to do. You just don't see them do it. Mm-hmm. All right. Final question. Where does Ohio State rank in terms of Big Ten road atmospheres? It's definitely a lead. It's be- I, I think it's better than Michigan. And I agree. I think it's better than Penn State because Ooh, the do you, do you? because the venue's a lot better, and I, I think the city's a lot better. Um, it's Columbus, Ohio, in the old Big Ten, not when you count LA. I believe it's the largest city in the Big Ten. I mean, it's a the largest city in the state of Ohio, so it's yeah. a major major city. Um, Columbus is, is it lar- bigger than Minneapolis. I don't know. Th- I, I know Columbus, Ohio, is bigger than Cincinnati and Cleveland. Both okay, it might be bigger than. And that's not just that's not putting Northwestern in Chicago. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I, I mean, but I, I, I just think it's a great city and a great place to go to a game. Mm-hmm. And then the history is rich. And um, so it, it's definitely, I, and I, I'm a stickler for Wisconsin. I've always loved going there. Wow. Um, really? Same. Interesting. I, I put, um, I put Ohio state right up there. Yeah. So the only time that I've been there was the Adrian Martinez freshman year game. And that atmosphere was, kind of underwhelming like what, what it didn't seem like ohio state fans were all that there you went there a couple times maybe right? i was there twice were you there in 2012 yeah okay that was a night game oh yeah that there. was the braxton miller game that was right? 63 to 38 yeah okay that, that was, was urban's first year i just have, must have blocked that one out yeah that was urban's first year that was a hornet's nest 63 38 was a big time hornet's yes. nest nebraska started i think kind of got going in that game then the then what happens is when 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 Ohio State gets rolling and that crowd gets rolling, it's like wrestling down a bowl. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do. Oh, and yeah. They couldn't do it. Nebraska couldn't Carlos do it. Carlos Hyde and Braxton Miller, they were just running all over him. Carlos Hyde. The COVID game was the last trip out there, though, 2020. Yeah, and I did not go to that one, obviously. God, COVID game. That was rough. I walked right by Bill Moose. And I didn't even know it was him because he had a big mask on. I, I, I didn't even I didn't know. What I remember it. is like you pulled up to that stadium. And normally, it's the hardest stadium to drive oh, up by to. far. I mean, there's tanks and military yeah. bar- barricades. It's well secured for whatever reason. That's an analogy. It's not it, actual. No, it's, no, it's, that's no, actual. it is. Is it's, there tanks? You yeah. saw like armed guards blocking the streets. Yeah, it's tanks? like you go through like checkpoints. <laughs> it's intense. It's like you're going into Soviet Russia. <laughs> this game in 2020, I pulled my car up like literally feet from the door. <laughs> And then you, you went up to the elevator and then you didn't leave. I mean, like the weirdest thing about COVID games is you, for some reason, they deemed it not safe to like even be, you know, to do an interview. Obviously, you were up in the press box. It was mm-hmm. crazy. And you did them on a Zoom. So people that weren't there still had the same access that you had being there. There was no press box announcer. That was the other strange thing. So you sat in this silent press box and you had to kind of like live. I mean, I felt like Riley Jane Hamilton of the Journal Star covering a <laughs> Class C two game, and you're super high up. Yeah, you're super high up. Yeah, it was like 
this is going to sound terrible, but it's like I didn't see the game. Yeah. I can remember writing that column and going, God, this is really, this is really challenging because I missed a lot of this game. I couldn't see some of it. There's no press box announcer. The no press box announcer yeah. really threw me off. Right. Because usually like they they give you the yard total on every play, and you were like, God, what was that? Yeah. 17 mm-hmm. yards. And I want to emphasize you are way up in the sky. And the live stats weren't working either. Do you remember that? Right. I absolutely Sean. Like there was no stat monitor. It was yeah. th- like nobody was prepared for that first game. And then I think it improved. Um, I, I do remember at Northwestern, simple. They said that when you were at your seat, you could have your mask off. And so, please simple, defend me on this. And simple had his mask off, and some just young, over serious kid just chastised Sipple for having his mask down at his seat. He hammered me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, I was eating. I was eating that that lunch of bet nuts and berries. Yeah, they had this real <laughs> super fancy Whole Foods trail mix box yeah that's fair no seriously it was, it was just like nothing it was like let's just spend an exorbitant amount of money on things at whole foods and feed the media this yeah classic evanston weirdness yeah and, and you got just ripped yeah it was, but it was very it was very trying times for everybody <laughs> well simple also got snake eyed for not wearing his mask outside in, in evanston do you remember that too yeah we were walking me you parker in on the streets on the sidewalks and everyone had their masks on outside and they looked at simple they're like why is this guy not wearing his mask i did not notice that and you could see people like the super shredder just walking there, down the street people were like walking away from you <laughs> i did not notice that either <laughs> it happens all that the time. generally happens <laughs> yeah, <I was> <laughs> say, that's nothing new <laughs> all right that's just a normal day but thank you abby oh you guys are hilarious of course it's fun